Hi, my name is Emily Neufeld. I'm a visual artist. I'm originally from Alberta, and now I gratefully live and work on these unceded Coast Salish territories in Vancouver. So I have been making work in uh, homes slated for demolition on the main, lower mainland and also making work in abandoned farmhouses across the prairies for the last five years. So this work was made in eastern Alberta near Ndiang, the town of Ndiang. And I was working in abandoned farmhouses across the prairies. I went into around 12 of them over the summer of 2018. And I got access to them through friends of friends or friends of family who knew the owners of these properties. So every one of them I got permission and I also was privileged enough to get a little bit of history about the house and the family that lived there. And this one was the Schillings house and the farmer that gave me access or like or introduced me to the Schillings family um, said that he remembers playing in that house as a child and he was he's not that much older than me so the home has only been abandoned for maybe 20, 25 years, and it already was in this very derelict kind of condition, which I always think about sort of these houses and how um, having human inhabitants, like keeping, you know, making sure that the windows are secure and that the, the weather stays out and animals stay out. It's almost like the blood in a body that kind of like um, keeps the house alive. And as soon as the the inhabitants leave, the houses very quickly kind of like succumb to just entropy and, and um, falling back into the, the prairie. So my family um, are Mennonites, my ancestors, my grandparents um, are third generation Canadian Mennonites that were farming in the prairies. Um, so when I'm working in these houses, I'm often thinking about sort of that, my own heritage and sort of the heritage of a lot of these um, Eastern European farmers that came to Canada. A lot of them are sponsored over by the railway. Um, and when they came to Canada, they came very little. The, the railway sponsored them, but they had to pay the railway back. And they were given some of the worst farming land in Canada. Um, in the Palliser Triangle, which it only had about two to three inches of topsoil and then was just like, like um, glacial dead, like pan. Um, and how their lives, you know, here were extremely difficult trying to like turn the land into like quality arable farming land. Um, and it's kind of interesting, I think a lot about um, the fact that that they were sort of like a slightly oppressed group they were oppressed they came to Canada because they were oppressed in Eastern Europe but then also when they got to Canada they were sort of seen as lesser than um, immigrants they were less desirable immigrants they were given sort of like they're put on these pieces of land that weren't that great um, but they also had no problem displacing the First Nations whose land they were on and so there's a sort of like interesting you know, these are oppressed people who then turn around and have no problem oppressing others. I also think a lot about kind of women's lives on these farms. They're, you know, a lot of women there had very little access to the outside community. They would just be with their own farming community and they um, didn't have very many choices or options. So these are all the sorts of things I'm thinking about um, as I'm making these works across, across the prairies. Because of my Mennonite farming roots, and I come from a long and proud line of blue collar workers and farmers, I really feel that if I'm not sweating and, you know, my muscles are straining and, you know, I hurt myself at least a few times that it doesn't really count as work. So I think that a lot of the artwork is very performative. The interventions that I kind of do in this space, the changes that I make are usually difficult and time consuming and hard labor. And I feel like, you know, that performance is sort of hearkening back to my like farming roots and my, um, you know, justifying the work as being work. And I think that you can tell when you look at the piece, you know, the labor that's gone into it. So in this particular piece, the bottom corner of the house, I cut off at an angle and then brought the prairie, like the sod, we sodded through the house that the, the sod went through the bottom corner of the house there. And so that performance of like cutting out a corner and bringing the prairie back through is like a reflection of the past where it used to all be prairie and also a reflection of the future where the house will fall down and the, the prairie will be there again.
so presenting this work at the Lansdowne Station uh, for the Capture Photo Fest um, is, is, I think, a great sort of contextualization for this work. Richmond, as we all know, uh, in contrast to the Palliser Triangle in on the prairies is some of the richest farmland in Canada. And it used to be, you know, land that was entirely covered with um, farms. So bringing this house to Richmond and um, sort of at this large scale where you can really see it from far back across the parking lot, um, kind of like alludes to the history of Richmond and also the, the history of just like farming across Canada. And I think that it's nice to sort of have it there is almost like a ghostly reminder of what once was and of the complicated history of farming across Canada in general.